without further ado, let's go right ahead and go into this second segment talking about Kyrie Irving and undergoing left surgery on his left hand. Anthony Edwards hits a three, scores 47 to 40 United States. Great job. Finally, Team USA is playing USA basketball. You love to see it, but they just went through a timeout. So I'll use the time to talk about Kyrie and his broken hand. So Kyrie for last month or like or at least earlier this month he had he had suffered a broken left hand when he was training right and the club announced this on Tuesday so but I have a feeling that you know his broken hand was a thing for a while right and there's no timetable for the 32 year old's return according to this article but and ESPN reported the Mavericks are optimistic Kyrie Irving will be ready for the start of training camp in a couple of months. Now, the eight-time All-Star teamed with Luka Doncic to key um, Dallas's run in the NBA Finals, where the Mavericks lost to the Boston Celtics in five games last month. Obviously, Kyrie did not play well in the Finals, but he played very well overall in the playoffs, averaging 22 points and five assists in 22 playoff games after putting up 25 points and five assists during the regular season. He was seeking his second NBA championship and his first NBA championship without LeBron James. But unfortunately, you know, that wasn't the case. That didn't happen. And, you know, partly, you know, the biggest reason why it didn't happen, unfortunately, was because of his play. Like, he didn't show up in the post in the finals when he used to show up a lot in the finals when he was playing with LeBron. Like, I remember he dropped 40-plus points at the same time Le- LeBron dropped 40-plus points in, I believe it was Game 5 of the postseason where in 2016. And not to mention, he also had a dominant performance in 2017 despite the fact that the, Cla- that the Cavs were only able to win one game. Now... He also reportedly played a key role in luring free agent Clay Thompson over to Dallas earlier this month, and Clay Thompson had spent his entire career with Golden State up until this point. Now, regarding the broken hand, this was now that he now that it's found out that he had a broken hand, I think this was probably the reason why Team USA didn't really consider, you know, re- acquiring Kyrie Irving to you know, the starting lineup or the lineup in general. And a lot of people were really, really upset, myself included, that Kyrie Irving wasn't even, you know, considered for making the national team. And it it didn't make any sense to me at first because it was like, you know, Kyrie, he had history with playing with Team USA. And there was a lot of success coming from the history that Kyrie was, that Kyrie had with Team USA. So the fact that he wasn't even, you know, considered to be selected for the team is kind of was kind of baffling to me, at least. But now that, you know, the injury report came out and he has actually, you know, suffered a broken hand and now he underwent surgery to recover that broken hand, it makes a little bit of sense why, you know, he's he was unavailable for team usa now what does this mean for the mavs and their season well they might have to deal with Kyrie not being available for training camp in you know the beginning of the season but aside from that i don't really think it's something that they should lose sleep over because really Kyrie is just you know another ball handler there for luka Doncic when luka Doncic doesn't want to have the ball like, that's sort of the offense that they run. They run a very isolation-heavy offense, and that was one of the things that the Boston Celtics were able to exploit in the postseason. Because if you were able to stop one of them, even a little bit, then you stop their entire flow and their entire offense. Because, again, it's really difficult to stop Kyrie. I'm not saying that it's easy. But if you stop one of them, and there's, it just makes it a lot easier for your team to manage. Because there's never been... A team in the history of basketball that has won off of straight isolation like you you a lot of teams have tried a lot of teams have failed 2018 Houston Rockets they tried it with James Harden and Chris Paul running a lot of isolations that didn't end up working because James Harden ended up missing a lot Uh, the Brooklyn Nets with Kyrie James Harden and Kevin Durant they didn't get 
far, even with their isolation lineup due to injuries, but also because they shot very poorly. In remember, I remember in game two, the final year where Kevin Durant and Kyrie made the postseason, they got swept by the Boston Celtics. And a large part of that was because in game two, they had a huge lead and they blew that lead because they were missing every single shot. Then what other teams tried isolation? And now and then we have the Dallas Mavericks that tried, you know, isolating majority of the time and majority of the time that isolation just didn't work in the finals. What was working in the rest of the season and in the rest of, and the majority of the postseason didn't work when the lights shine the brightest. And speaking of the lights shining brighter, it seems that Team USA is finally responding. Now they're up by nine points as opposed to actually being a close game. So now it seems like, you know, Team USA is actually putting their foot on the gas. Derek White is actually playing now. So, you know, seeing the... Seeing the baldy in action is it's beautiful. I love players that have bald heads. It's just it's so funny because you know, I feel like I have this speculation that whenever a player in basketball, whenever they go bald, it's like they have ascended the, from their previous state. I don't know what it is, but it's like it seems like every single time a player goes bald, they just get better. You look at Kareem. Kareem had a huge afro when he was on the Bucks, but then when he got bald and was on the Lakers, he won a majority of his championships there. Kobe Bryant, when when he was, obviously, you know, he was Froby as well, but when he got rid of his hair, he was, he became the Black Mamba. And, I mean, obviously, you can make the argument that he was always the Black Mamba, but he really became a killer when he shaved his hair. Michael Jordan, one of the prime examples of a, of a bald man ascending and transcending the rest of the league, like, when he had when he had hair he was still pretty good but when he most people recognize him for him being bald so i i went on a little tangent of bald heads but you know it's just it's a funny thing and you know with Derek white uh, the minute he you know got rid of his hair he just transcended he just played so much better i don't know what it is like he became a 20 point per game scorer when he shaved his head i don't know what it is maybe I don't know why, but that that just happens. So, LeBron, go bald. <laughs> but aside from that, this ugh, they're playing some really sloppy basketball right now, I might add. Okay, but Team USA, they're playing great defense. There's 1 minute left in in this game, and you know, they're up by, you know, 10 plus points, which is, you know, fantastic. But let me know in the comments what you think of Kyrie's surgery. Like, do you guys think that this will hinder the Mavs in their season? Or do you guys think that you would think this was also the reason why Anthony Davis has four blocks, by the way. Do you think that this is the reason why he wasn't selected for Team USA? Or do you think it was some other reason, like, you know, maybe just the United States or even Nike just not wanting Kyrie Irving to be participant in Team USA? Now, I say Nike because... Jalen Brown recently tweeted out that, you know, Nike had something to do with the selection of Derek White as opposed to Jalen Brown because there isn't really that much of a good relationship between Jalen Brown and Nike. And it's a little bit, it's speculation, but obviously because of the tweet. So I'm not going to say that that's flat out the case, but let me know in the comments what you guys think. Now, Team USA is up 54 to 42 right now. That's what we like to see. They went on a 14-2 scoring run. It's beautiful. And guess what? This was all with Joel Embiid not in the starting lineup. So yeah, now we will go ahead and go into the third segment where I talk about whether or not the Clippers should trade Kawhi Leonard. And on top of that, you know, give my halftime report on this game because, you know, there's less than a minute left in this game. And I'll just give a little bit of a rundown in the third segment right after this short break. Now, be sure to stay tuned. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay for it? GSMC Sports Network is available on YouTube. Just search GSMC Sports Network. Get your fix of daily sports talk shows on YouTube absolutely free. NFL, college football, NBA, MLB, MMA, UFC, fantasy football, and so much more. 
GSMC Sports Network has shows running all day long with new sports shows starting every two hours. Just like on your favorite cable sports channel, except GSMC Sports Network is absolutely free. Just search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube to catch one of your new favorite shows, like the GSMC College Football Podcast, Chip Shot Football Podcast, Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast, GSMC Basketball Podcast, and so many more. Check it out for yourself. GSMC Sports Network, now available on YouTube absolutely free. Search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube right now.